This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. everyone to this week's episode of mom and pop eateries of gray bruce i'm your host rob leonard and over the past few weeks we've been doing some revisits uh, some of the uh, amazing mom and pops that we spoke to last year in 2020 we're going to head on back and put some of them to see how things are going uh, and uh, you know what's happened for them or happened to them in the, in the past year and uh, very pleased to have back on the show evan kilnick uh, the owner of uh, Subble Golf Country Club, the home of Bogey's Pub. Welcome back, Evan. Hey, yeah, thanks for having me. All right, so uh, as I was saying to you before we started taping, uh, I took a look at our, our last interview, and uh, we're pretty much right where we were. Uh, I think it was last June. Um, we're pretty much in the same spot this year as we were last year at this time with uh, uh, patios uh, being uh, just about to, I think they were open last year this time, year, but they're just getting ready to open. And of course, they their uh, golf season, uh, um, you know, again this year, but, um, you know, it, like I said, everything seems to be uh, pretty much on par, uh, no pun intended, uh, with their <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, things things seem very similar to last year, um, except for, you know, a few big differences. Uh, numbers are, are way down, which is really encouraging. Um, you know, a lot of people have gotten at least their first shots. I, I, I talked to a few gentlemen this morning who were, you know, getting their second shots this week. Uh, so, you know, that's great to hear that hopefully we can uh, – be pretty close to putting putting a lot of this behind us and uh, starting to move move on with our our lives again. And uh, you know, everybody is. Uh, I, I bet you you can't find one person that doesn't that isn't ready for that. Uh, it's been a long haul, that's for sure. So, um, all right, let's let's uh, run back to that first uh, the first uh, show we did. We'll just touch on where you came, like when you started out and. Uh, uh, as I said, it was last June. You were taken over uh, as a new owner with the golf course in December, I believe it was. And uh, then, of course, uh, we discussed all of the all of the things leading up to, uh, you know, uh, talking about your takeout and delivery for bogeys and uh, and getting the golf course open again. Um, and all of that stuff was new to you, and it was new to a lot of people. But uh, um, so let's start with. Uh, after June, how, how was your summer? Uh, Gray Bruce had really good numbers, so I would imagine that uh, that it was pretty much a, a you know a normal summer as far as the golf course goes. Yeah, for sure. Uh, um, yeah, what, uh, which was I guess that May long weekend there. Uh, yeah, it was really busy uh, on the golf course, uh, just with kind of limited limited activities available for everyone. Uh, and then that led to, you know, the pub being a, a very popular place. Um, uh, I think we had some indoor dining going on last summer as well. It's hard to kind of remember what, what lockdown we were on and where, where we were in the whole process. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was a great summer. Um, we got opened up just in time, uh, you know, and everything went great, you know, uh, not just here, but uh, all over Canada. I don't think. We had a positive case that that kind of led back to a golf um, between the between the golf course and the restaurant. Uh, you know, we followed protocols, and, and uh, you know, everyone who came in was really happy to be be allowed to be allowed to be out uh, and enjoying their summers, which made you know the rules a little easier to follow. I think everyone understood we were in a. You know, not a, not an ideal position, and you know we weren't making the rules. Uh, the government and, and uh, the government was so. Yeah, overall, everybody was just excited excited to be out, and uh, yeah, it ran really. Yeah, it's uh, 
uh, as I said, you know, last year it was relatively new to us, uh, new to everybody, as I said, and uh, uh, something for everybody to get used to. But as you said, people understood that it it wasn't you making those rules. It was the government that it was, you know, expecting expecting you to enforce those rules if you wanted to stay open. So, um, so yeah, summer was great, uh, you know, maybe a little too hot some days, but the, there's a great breeze that comes off a lake here on that blows right across that Gulf course, I think. So, um, you know, it certainly makes for a comfortable experience. And, uh, as you know, hey, Grain Bruce had great numbers, so there was some indoor dining allowed. And uh, um, But then as your season ended, um, you know, the numbers started to, to tick out a little bit and, uh, you know, some of those changes happen. Again. So, uh, as you're winding down the Gulf and, uh, you know, uh, what was life like for both from October, October on through the winter months? Yeah. Um, well, like, as you know, once the winter months come, it gets a little quieter around here. Um, and, you know, bogeys has been so good for, for years to, to be opened up throughout the winter, uh, just to give people a, a place to come, uh, get together, uh, enjoy some some live music and our karaoke and our wing night. So a big part of it is the uh, the community camaraderie and uh, getting everyone together. And uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to to do that. So um, you know, between our staff stepping up, uh, you know, there there weren't the hours that there usually were available for everyone. So you know, everybody everybody felt it this this winter. Uh, made a lot of sacrifices to to you know get, get to where we are now. Um, you know, our shuttle drivers doubled as delivery drivers. Um, we had everyone stepping up and, and helping out with with our takeout, which was really busy, which was really good. Uh, we still ran our wing night on Thursdays, and you know, even though we weren't allowed to have people inside, it was uh, you know just a a constant flow of cars coming into the parking lot uh, to enjoy our food. So that part of it was really good. Um, it would have been nice to be able to enjoy it with people and uh, and make the make those winter months a little a little more enjoyable and go by a little bit quicker. But uh, we did what we ha had to do, and you know, we're we're excited that we're at this this point that we're at now. You know, I've had karaoke uh, organizers contact me already and, and musicians. They're excited to to see, you know, potential we have to have them outside if that's our, our only option. Um, and eventually, you know, bring that back inside and get bogeys back to, to the fun fun place it was kind of, you know, not, not too long ago. So. Well, I'll tell you, I was uh, involved with the music community uh, back uh, you know a lot of them personally, and I know a lot of them that uh, that I play bogeys, and they love playing bogeys. And uh, at any given time, they don't care where they play as long as they get to play. They, you know, the, the patio experience is really nice for them too. If you get a nice evening, and uh, you know, they 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 just want to play. They <laughs> they want to, and uh, you know, they, they're really excited and itching to get back to it too. I can just imagine how many songs have been written over the last year. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, um, all right. Now, uh, as I said, the last time that we talked, I, I golfed for a number of years. And in the last lockdown, uh, last year at this time, I couldn't for the me understand what the problem was with having golf courses open. My mindset is still the same again this year. But uh, the only explanation that we got from uh, Premier Doug Ford was, uh, well, you're going to carpool to the golf course and then you and the buddies are going to have a couple of pops afterwards. I think that's exactly how the quote went. But, uh, <laughs> you know, which to me, that was a lame excuse. This is me talking. You don't have to answer back on it. But, but really a lame excuse. I'm sure that y y golfers love golf. They want to get out. Yes, having a drink afterwards is part of the ritual but um they weren't allowed to come into the into the place so i couldn't understand that being an issue yeah um i understood you know a little bit where he's coming from but i think the issue was that ontario just seemed to be so far behind everybody else you know uh, places that had similar numbers 
were dealing with their problems faster and opening up their their goal and their their outdoor activities and stuff a little earlier. Um, so I think it was just frustrating to see that you know there was that map that they came out with and literally Ontario was the only <laughs> the only place in the world where you couldn't legally play golf. So. Um, you know they got they got it open uh, for the May long weekend. We're still going to have a great golf season, uh, busier than ever. A um, lot lot of new people taking up the sports. So yeah, it took them a while and uh, didn't necessarily with with everything, but uh, just happy to be where we are now. And uh, we we got this July August weather coming in May and June. So yeah, it's been it's been a good start to the season. Would have been nice a couple of weeks earlier, but. Uh, yeah, well, we're just happy we're here. Yeah, and with the you know the way the stages are set up, uh, um, basically it's one day is that we have to stay in stage one. But um, the numbers are looking really, really good. I mean, uh, you know, today I think the the numbers were uh, you know four hundred and eleven. I think it was. Uh, you know, so that's a really good sign that uh, that we may be able to move in, and especially Green Bruce counties who you know historically over this uh, pandemic have had fantastic numbers so do you think there's a chance that they may bump, bump the stage two a little bit quicker yeah that the numbers are very very promising it's it's good to see um not just for getting things opened up quicker it's just you know nice to see in general that you know there's there's less people dealing with uh, with COVID-19 and uh you know, if we if we could get open and uh, into stage two and and three quicker, that'd be great. Um, I think we're definitely on the right track, and uh, yeah, excited excited to see uh, of a normal summer coming. So yeah, and as you mentioned earlier about the the vaccines are on the table <laughs> this year, which we didn't have last year. So and uh, with a large number of uh, the people uh, of Ontario, I think that I. The number must be close to seventy percent that have uh, have their first shot. And as you mentioned, uh, there's a number, a lot of people that are going for their second shot uh, within the next couple of weeks. So, uh, and then the Canadian government today saying that uh, uh, they may restrict or they may um, lessen the restrictions on the Canada-U.S. border, um, allowing people that have been fully vaccinated to cross the border, you know, uh, back and forth. So. And again, uh, another really good sign for uh, things getting back to normal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we can you know safely the borders opened up and uh, get everything back to normal. The better, you know, I'm sure we're all we're all missing seeing you know whether it's family or or seeing you know, live sporting events or concerts or or whatever it is, just just traveling. Um, yeah, you know, those are all things I think we took for granted in the past, and I think we'll all really be excited to enjoy again, hopefully soon. Yeah, and Salvo Beach, Julian, uh, as well. Um, they get a lot of holidayers coming from Michigan State. Uh, you know, there's always been a lot of Michigan plates coming up to Salvo Beach. So, um, but over the you know prior to the pandemic, uh, Salvo Beach was uh, getting record numbers of people coming in here that they'd never seen before, but. Uh, you know, which is great uh, for the community. So now, <coughs> excuse me, um, you're not right at the beach. You're probably a couple of miles before the beach on a, a highway. What is it? They changed it. Highway 6? Is it still 6? Or what is it? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, well, County County Road 8, uh, Bruce County Road 8. Uh, but I believe, yeah, it's part of Highway 6 there. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but the road leads right into the beach, and uh, um, this may not be may not be a factor. But uh, Sable Beach uh, or the South Bruce Peninsula Council has decided to double the parking rates uh, at Sable Beach, uh, putting it up to thirty dollars, thirty dollars a day per car. Um, do you think that'll have any impact on the number of people that are coming to Sable Beach this summer? Question. Um... I think I think regardless, I think the beach is going to be a, a, a pretty pretty busy place. Um, now, you know, to be honest, I've been up here a year and a half. Last year, with with COVID and everything happening, 
Uh, I didn't stray too far from uh, from the golf course and the bar here. Um, this is kind of my little bubble. Uh, but you know, when I do go down, I you know, parking's an issue. Um, so I think I think it'll help for sure. Uh, create some revenue for uh, for the area. For, yeah, for, yeah, it might deter some people from from coming up. Uh, but yeah, it's. I guess it really doesn't affect you being where you are, and uh, uh, you're not going to charge for people parking your park. Hope. <laughs> no, no, our shuttle here, if you'd like, you don't even have to bring your vehicle, and uh, we'll get you. will get you home safe and safe as well after a few drinks or. Uh, the the stages that the, the provincial government has set up for us now, and it's uh, stages one, two, and three. We're in stage one at this point, and doing the math and looking forward, uh, it really looks like uh, there isn't going to be any indoor dining. Um, you know, until at least the 1st of August. So, um, you know, I think probably a lot of, uh, a lot of people are really looking forward to that. And, and maybe there's a chance that if, uh, the numbers keep going down and the vaccination numbers keep going up, that, uh, uh, we might see it a little sooner. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be great. Um, you know, I'm just, the, the quicker we can safely get everything opened up, the better. Um, but you know, we're, we're lucky here to have, have a large patio and with the weather that we're going to have in, in, uh, June and July, um, yeah, we're, we're lucky to be able to see as many people outside as we can. Uh, once we can start getting people inside though, that'd be great. And, uh, leading into the fall, you know, we could po potentially bring back the, the bands and, and the karaoke and, and, and really make it a, a fun night out again, not just a place where you come get your food and, and go home. Um, so just, I'm sure everyone's excited to enjoy the social side of it. And uh, yeah, looking looking forward to it. Yeah, I uh, actually asked a question on the Facebook page, uh, the Mom and Pop Eatery's Facebook page the other day, asking people if they were, um, you know, what their opinions are of you know, uh, the reopening of the dining rooms and things like that, you know, how do they feel about it? Each and every person, they, there wasn't one person that wasn't there, that was against it. They they want to sit down with a friend or a family, a uh, family member or whatever, to have a drink, to have a meal that they didn't have to cook themselves. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I think we're we're all looking forward to that. And, you know, seeing, uh, seeing on TV, how far along some of these other places are like a good example is that the indianapolis 500 a few weeks ago 100 130,000 people crammed into uh into a stadium and we're just you know we're just looking forward to sitting down with three people at a table and, ha and having some drinks so you know seeing seeing those large numbers and large groups really does give us hope that uh you know some someday soon this won't be the norm and uh you know, we can get back to to the way it was. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, it really is strange to watch, uh, you know, when you, we were watching the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens playing uh, to absolutely nobody until, you know, the final games of that series. But, uh, but then they're showing highlights coming from Carolina where there's 19,000 people in the stadium, <laughs> you know. So uh, it, uh, it really... You know, it's our reality, but this is where we want to be, you know, as soon as we can. You know, I was starting, I was just starting to forget about the Toronto Maple Leafs collapse until you brought that up. So, uh, it's still kind of a, still kind of a soft spot for me. Uh, uh, yeah. I'll be honest, I'll be honest with you, I, I had a bit of a lump in my throat when I was saying it. So, yeah. <laughs> I got to tell you, though. Uh, I hadn't watched the game all season, but the only three games I watched were the last three games of that series. Should I take it personally? You heard that, folks. It's all Rob Leonard's fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I do take it personally. I'll tell you that. Yeah, but it's not my fault. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, uh, geez, what else can we talk about? You know, uh, 
again, uh, well, let's talk about last year. You were new. You were new to the new to the well, not mess. You'd been to the area a lot, but you were new to the to the golf course. You just purchased it in in December, and uh, new to the restaurant business as well. Tell us about uh, one year in. Uh, what are your feelings about it? And you've got to be feeling a lot more comfortable than let's say you were last year. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, it it doesn't feel like it's only been a year and a half. It feels like I've known these these people up here and and this place for longer than that. Um, it was overwhelming at first, for sure. Uh, but you know, with this great team that we have um, in every single department, uh, you know, you go from the restaurant to to the to the golf side to the to the, uh, to the grounds crew to management, um, just everyone makes it so easy. Um, everybody works together. The communication is, is fantastic. Um, and we're, we're growing something special here. It'll be nice once, once we don't have these kind of hiccups along the way with uh, closing and opening and limitations and restrictions. Um, but you know, with, with all the hurdles that we've had to, you know, jump and, uh, and, and everything that's happened along the way, like, you know, very proud of, of, of what we've done here in a, in a short time. And uh, yeah, it just, it, it does feel, feel like it's a lot more comfortable this year than, than last year, you know, knowing, knowing most of the people's names and uh, seeing familiar faces and, you know, just uh, having experiences to, to use as, as reference points and, and to grow, grow on, grow off of, uh, yeah, it's been it's been a fantastic year, and really looking forward to uh, to a full season without uh, you know hopefully too many more surprises or or hiccups. Yeah, I agree with you. Amen to that. That's for sure. And uh, you know, uh, as you said, the, you had no problem getting people to come back to work and getting people there. And they and as you said, uh, you know, just in everything you just said about the communication and about uh, everybody, basically looks like they're everybody's getting along. It creates an atmosphere where you want to come to work every day. Uh, you know, you obviously. You, you love your job, you love the environment that you're working in, and you love the people that you're working with, which is so important. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think everyone working here would agree with you on that exactly exact statement. Um, you know, a lot of these people who work here, they're, ret they're retired. Uh, you know, they've, they've been cottaging in the area. They've lived in the area. A lot of them are golfers who, who started off as members here saw saw what we were doing and wanted to be a part of it uh so you know a lot of these people don't need to don't need to work and i hear it a lot from people you know i'm not here because i need the job i'm here because i like the job i'm here because i like the the people and uh the place and it really is a, a community gathering spot and uh yeah just my my favorite place in the world it's it's awesome here awesome Awesome. Okay, so let's talk about the golf course for a minute. Let's talk about the uh, um, the rules uh, as compared to last year. Were there many uh, many rule differences this time around as as it was last summer, or did it pretty much stay the same? Um, yeah, pretty much stayed the same. Um, we're able to do a little bit more on the golf side. We, you know, at, at this point, I, I think we can. Uh, last year we didn't really know what the virus was, so there were no there were no rakes on the golf course. There was no uh, ball washers, benches, uh, because we didn't really have the information. Uh, we're getting to the point now where where we can start bringing some of that back into into play. Um, as far as restaurant restrictions, small things. Uh, we're only allowed four at a table outside as opposed to to six. Uh, last year so little things like that but uh, overall kind of the same thing you know we're just making sure we're keeping everything clean sanitary uh, making sure that everyone coming here is coming into a safe environment uh, and uh, doing their part to keep it keep it that way and uh, like I said earlier uh, you know groups are a lot more understanding that they can't finish their round and hang out in the parking lot and and get together with two or three golf groups and 
you know, they understand we're lucky to be able to have them out here. They follow the rules um, and everything's going great. Once we can start, you know, relaxing some of those rules, uh, it'll, it'll be even greater. But uh, yeah, everyone's been, everyone's been awesome. Haven't had any issues. Um, so. Yeah. That's great. As you said, everybody's just, uh, they don't want to do anything to jinx it. <laughs> you know, they want to, they want their golf and uh, everybody's willing to follow the rules. So, um, Evan, it's, um, you know, and, and another question I, I think I asked you last year as well. Um, uh, just trying to think. I, well, you know what? That's not really relevant to this year. So, but but again, uh, you know, with all the changes and in, in with everything going on uh, the way it's been, um, you know, I, I still firmly believe that the, that uh, the golf course is 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 a very safe environment to be in. You know, uh, I I can only think of maybe one spot like you, you mentioned about. Uh, you know, people bunching up at the tee boxes, for example, right? But that's something that you could, but as you play, you know, everybody's distanced anyway, you know, uh, um, you know, in golf, you do not, until you do not shoot for the green until the group that's on the green has cleared the green and moved on. So uh, I just, I, I just couldn't get the reasoning on golf course of being No, exactly. Uh, and even though, you know, we, we've started uh, to bring back, for example, our, our senior day. So that's this morning, Wednesday. And we had about, you know, over 70 seniors uh, playing this morning. Now, before COVID, those 70 seniors would all show up at, at 7.30. They'd find out what time they were playing, and they'd be in one giant group, and they would start teeing off in a shotgun where everyone would go to a different hole. They'd all start at the same time. They'd all finish at the same time. And that group would be, you know, together um what we've had to do with COVID is you know we've set up the groups the, the day before uh we call them we let them know this is your tea time don't arrive more than 10 minutes before you know stick stick to your car your group and when you when it's your time come up get your carts move on um so just that for example there there's ways where we can we can spread them out where they're not bunching up and like you said once they start golfing you know in a perfect world they're they're keeping their pace. They're keeping up with the group in front of them. They have their own, you know, basically acre or two to themselves out there. Um, so Evan, that's a very safe, very safe way to, to spread out. Run out of time, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, okay, Evan Kilnick, owner of the Sobel Golf and Country Club, home of Bogey's Pub. Thank you so much for doing this and have a great summer. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate you having me, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Take care, and uh, hopefully see you this summer. Absolutely. Okay, for producer Mark Perry, I'm Rob Leonard. Uh, we'll see you next time. Response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. seat to the biggest movies. They're here. All hands on deck. He could die.